What's up, IG? I don't know if that's the best way to just. What's <laughs> up, everybody? What's up? Hey, we've had so many questions. What's up, IG? Oops. Could you turn Sorry, guys. <laughs> She's gonna be I looking for. We're down. gonna do, we're gonna do Q and A here in a moment. What's up, everybody? Um, we've gotten so many, so many, like so many questions. We figured we're gonna try to go live every day for the next week and uh, uh, try to get those questions answered at least to the best of our ability, right? Um, uh, I've been through um, three shifts in the economy. I was in business in the late '80s. I was business in 2007. Um, we had 9/11. Um, so so many people are asking me how to navigate emotionally. Um, how to navigate with discipline, how to come out okay, how long will this last, when will the fear go away, all the things to expect. So I'm just gonna do the best I can to share. Um, so a couple things, do you see this? How about all the craziness? We are any day, like legit, any day having a baby. <laughs> how crazy any is that? Day. And we're home. So, uh, such a big boy. Yeah, he's, uh, he's heading towards nine pounds. It's because her and I are so big, you know? <laughs> I'm like 5'8 on a good day. She's 5'3 and we're having this monster <laughs> baby. Uh, anyway, uh, good to see you guys. Um, appreciate you all for being here. A um, couple of things. Lisa's going to be looking at her phone. So if you got questions here in a moment, ask them. She's going to let me know so I don't have to look down my ADD. Uh, I'll never get anything done. Um, <laughs> So happy Saturday during these crazy times in, in history. This is really unique. Um, for those of you that are younger, like Lisa's brothers are younger. She's got brothers way younger than her. And they're like, ah, this, that's just a thing. You guys are over exaggerating. It's no big deal. But I've been here. This is going to take an economic hit to our world and especially to in America. We're, you know, some of you are feeling it now. Some of you are... Um, you know, stressed and worried. Some of you might not be working, might not be getting a paycheck. So there's a, there's a lot of things. And I think the repercussions of this are going to be, even if this, this whole virus thing is cleared up in three months, I still think it could, it could last a while. So what do we have to do to prepare? What do we have to do to be strong on the inside? What do we have to do to prepare um, financially, uh, emotionally, physically? Um, and I think that I, I'm not going to solve all of that on a 20 minute or a half hour um, uh, live on Instagram, but I'm going to do my best. A lot of questions came in about um, being at home. Um, how many of you are, um, oh yeah, and this is my new do for today. Lisa's been asking me to do my hair like this for how long? Two years? Yep. She's been asking me for two time. years to do it, and this morning she did this, and uh, I don't know, do you like it? I don't know. I don't know. I got to get used to it. I've had the same hair do the other she one. She looks like Clark Kent. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, an older version of Clark Kent, but thank no, you, baby. baby. Thank you, baby. Okay. Uh, a lot of things, um, a lot of things came in. Um, one of them was, and I want to talk about self-discipline. Now, in a time like this, a lot. I was going to ask you before I got distracted with, with the hair. <laughs> um, how many here? Give me a thumbs up or a heart if you are. Um, you know, wifey does know. See why I can't look down? I'll just get. Uh, how many of you are working from home by choice, or you because you have to, or staying at home, or, or kind of not. It's kind of self-quarantined, right? I, don't, I hate even using that word. It sounds like a, when you hear quarantine, it's like, oh. But a lot of you are home. And a lot of you are asking about self-discipline. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of tactical ways, right? Like, think of tactical ways on self-discipline. You could find a spot where you like to work. There's like two or three spots in my house I like to work. It gives me, especially when my kids are here and they're running around, I gotta go hide someplace. And if you can't hide, find a corner. Uh, believe me, I used to work from home when I was in a tiny little 300 square foot apartment and I just found a little corner. And, but I found a way to make it mine. And I found a way to put the things there that made me feel good, whether that's a plant and make sure you have your water there. If you like green tea or if you want a green drink, like I do all the things to hack. I, I, I put like some Indian flute music on sometimes just low enough that it takes the silence out of the room. So there's tactical things that you can do that can make your surroundings help you get into flow state. And flow just means an hour, two, four hours where you're actually moving the needle. You're getting things done. Now you could set up all the tactical stuff in the world if you know anything about me with my books and what I do is I like to go upstream, right? Kind of anchor in, how, even if you set up all the tactical, how do you make it real? How do you get sucked into not obsessing on Netflix? Um, how do you get obsessed on not obsessing on the news, right? Or on Instagram. Or on Instagram, except <laughs> unless you're here with us and then it's totally good, right? Um, uh, so, um, Here's what I want you to think about. You guys ready for this one? This is, this is a teachable moment. The rest of we've just been having fun. This is a teachable moment. This is things that I do on a regular basis. Let's just say that this lasts three months. Could be six, could be longer, whatever it is. Let's just say it's three months. 
from today. Um, and as soon as I'm done with this, ask any questions and, and Lisa will pick out the ones that she likes. Um, but let's say it's three months from today and you look back. And in those three months, you could say, wow, I had all this time at home and I still didn't get the course done. I still didn't lay out the business I wanted to do. I still didn't do the spring cleaning. I still didn't uh, work on my own mindset. I still didn't meditate. I still didn't bond and build a better connection with my wife, my husband, my kids. How shitty is that gonna feel? Let's just say it like it is. How crappy will that feel if in three months from now, six months from now, you look back and all you did during this shift in our world was binge on Netflix? Or, or obsessed on the news and watched every little thing that came in. I think we'd be really disappointed in ourselves. Listen, we can't control the outside circumstances. It's completely out of our control. There's none of us that are gonna fix this overnight. Well, the only thing we can control is what we believe on the inside, what we do as humans, what we do in a tough situation. We're always judged by tough times. No one's ever judged when it's easy. Anybody could handle this when it's easy, right? Anybody can handle easy stuff. Anybody can handle a bull market when everything's going good and the sales are coming in and everything's perfect. This is the time where heroes need to come alive and that hero lives in all of us. So what I'd say about self-discipline is figure out what it is tactically. Where are you gonna work? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna focus on? You're gonna focus on your personal growth. You're gonna focus on finally getting that business started. Focus on KBB in the knowledge industry. Gonna focus on being in the information age. Focus on finally joining the digital economy. That's the tactical, like tactical and strategic. But then go upstream and just say, what if I don't do this? How the hell am I gonna feel in six months when I wasted six months where I couldn't be outside, where I, 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 I eliminated my time outside? Like, this is a shitty time and it's also an opportunistic, uh, opportunistic time for those that look at it that way. And I want you to think about that because you could also fast forward six months and say, wow, I got the course done. I got my website up. I got people coming in, already made a sale. I've, I've, I know what my next business is gonna be. I know what my next project is gonna be. I worked on my personal growth. I started meditation. My relationship is doing better. Like we got two choices in life. What disciplines me, I don't like discipline. I don't like rules. I never did in school. I wasn't good at listening to teachers, but I could self-discipline like crazy because I could focus on what I wanted and that's aspirational, but I also can focus on what I don't want. The last thing I wanna do is look back in three or six months and go, damn, I just wasted a whole bunch of time. Okay, um, you got any questions that you like? No, not yet. Okay, it's ask really some questions. Awesome comments, so thank oh, you. But yeah, thank, if you have any questions about right now, um, let me know and I'll go on to the next thing I wanna share with you. Um, so any questions about the economy, about income, about marketing, if I don't know the answer, I'm surely not gonna just uh, uh, listen to myself talk. Uh, I'll do the best to answer that. But um, how many books do you read in a year? Uh, about one every three weeks. It used to be one about every 10 days, but it's about one every three weeks right now. I listen to them while I work out. So obviously I've been working out less. But Here's a question. Do you think in times like this is a great time to take opportunity? Yes, absolutely. Now, here's the thing what I'll share about opportunity. If you equate opportunity to hurting other people, then hell no. It, it'll feel like uh, chalk, uh, nails on a chalkboard. Opportunity is do you have the opportunity to grow as a human? Do you have the opportunity to help other people during this time? Do you have the opportunity to serve? Listen. I get to be blessed to be in an industry where I get to share my greatest strategies and secrets and techniques I learned over being an entrepreneur for 30 years, 30 plus years. I get to impact and help other people. At the same time, it's my business, right? Um, if it's opportunistic where you're selling hand sanitizer for $400 a bottle or trying to get uh, toilet paper, get you know $500 for a roll of toilet paper, or you know, scaring people into buying your emergency something something kit, then that's BS, that's terrible. That's not opportunistic, that's just not being a good human. So I think this is a great time to be opportunistic if it's the, with the right thing. Okay, um, how do I become more technology inclined? Oh man, that's, that's it, a good one. That is a good one. Um, technology, we're all tech, if you're over 40, <laughs> Your, your fear of technology is huge, right? My kids, it's a part of their life. Or even if you're in your 30s, I'm yeah. like, I don't know how to do half the, I know. you know. Here's the cool part. Stuff when it comes to do. tactical things like that, like um, lessons, you could just YouTube it. I mean, the truth yeah. is this morning at 4.30, mm -hmm. I was supposed to, last night I was supposed to scan a document and send it back for a deal I'm doing. 
and I didn't get it done in time. I woke up at 4.30 this morning because we fell asleep early. I'm like, oh no, I didn't do that last night. And I'm like, I'm home. I'm like a technophobe. I, I got to scan it. I know we got a printer. And I'm like, uh, it's a scanner too. I know, but I went to, I just, I put it in, hit scan. And it's like, you don't have your app set up. I'm like, oh no. At 4.30 this morning, I, I, I Googled it. At 4.30 this morning, I Googled it on a Hewlett Packer. It showed me five steps and I did. So it's all about learning. It's all about self-education. And we are in a self-education world. Listen, you want to know if self-education is the real deal? Ask anybody under 15. Like if you ask your kids or your grandchildren or your nieces or your nephew or your friend's kids, you say, hey, how do you, uh, how do you run this thing on IG? How do you do this? How do you do this? Like, Google it or YouTube it. Like they're used to self-education. We're just the type to think that we got to go sit in a classroom or have somebody teach us. You don't. Okay, this is a good one. Should we discount our courses for people who may be struggling financially? That's a really great question. Um, it just depends. It depends. And I, I, I think it's a great thing to, to do. We're, we're going to be doing stuff like, just so you guys know if you're on my email list. Um, oh, I, I did something. Uh, I want you guys, I'm nothing for sale here. And there's nothing for sale on this page. Uh, we created a page with some really valuable training with myself and Tony that we thought could really help the mindset, could help with your self-discipline, but also help um, keep that inner hero alive. And, um, you know, uncertainty is a bitch. And when you have uncertainty in your soul, it's hard to do anything. So we put together a training. Uh, we took some of our best trainings and we put them on a page. What's that? Uh, oh, at weeklywisdom.com. If somebody could type that in there, I'd appreciate it. I don't know how to post. See, I should learn. I should not yeah, post. Should post. Yeah. Learn. So weeklywisdom, uh, weeklywisdom.com. There's some trainings from Tony and I. Again, there's nothing for sale on that page. It's just pure training. So we're doing that. So you can either discount the course you have or the training you have or provide other really uh, great value to everybody right now. Um, I'm doing this live right now because I want to deliver value, right? I'm not selling anything today. Not a damn thing. Um, will I sell something again? Of course. Um, at weeklywisdom.com, there, there's no link to buy anything, but there's lots of great trainings and there's plus a video for me that I think could, could really help. Um, but I will sell something again. And we got a couple other courses that we're going to offer as a discount. Thank you guys for putting weeklywisdom.com. You're going to like that. Uh, I missed the exact question, but it said something about, will the real estate market be affected? Uh, and there's people that think that it might not. Yeah. Um, so... Only because real estate has been a part of my life for a really long time as well. Um, if it follows the trend, if it follows what happened in 80, 80, late 80s uh, after 9-11 um, um, and, uh, um, and in 2008, um, yes, the real estate market will take a hit. Let's just look at common sense, right? Um, again, I hope I'm wrong because I am... am I'm not going to guarantee my uh, wisdom right here is perfect. I can only look back over history. And when you know history, remember one thing, history is bound to repeat itself, right? And what typically happens is it doesn't happen immediately with real estate. When people, so many people are going to lose their jobs or lose income or need to save. And they're going to say, you know what, I'm going to rent another year. No, I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy right now. Let me get safe. Let me get secure again. And demand goes down. So now there's lots of supply because the market was at an all time peak. Right, we've had a 10 year run in the market. Market was at an all time peak. Demand was high, supply was high. Now demand's gonna drop and supply is still gonna be up there. It seems inevitable that the real estate market will take a hit, which also creates amazing opportunity if you understand how to you know, prepare and do that. Any more questions? Um, this was a good one. Um, how could one with language barrier living in, in this country for four years overcome the mindset of people of people, of how people see me as an outsider while owning my small business I just opened. Okay, so I'm gonna look at that, I'm gonna have you look at it through a different lens. I have done trainings on the immigrant mindset and there's nothing like the immigrant mindset because you're coming here as an underdog, right? That's why I wrote the book, The Underdog Advantage, right? Um, underdogs are the ones that thrive, especially in times like this because a lot of times, and I'm not being rude, but sometimes when um, sometimes we can get too complacent. Sometimes we can get too entitled. And as an immigrant with a language barrier, you have to work harder than everybody else. You probably don't have a big pile of money that someone's supporting you. You have to, you have to be innovative. You have to be resourceful instead of having resources. So what I would say is it could be a pain. I get that. But simultaneously, it's actually your unfair advantage. It's why you have a small business. So I, I would look through the lens of your hunger to prove everybody right and wrong or prove everybody that prove to everybody what you can do. 
um, I think is more powerful than you could ever imagine. So um, I'm sorry about the language barrier. I'm sorry if anyone's ever treated you disrespectfully, but I'm proud of you. You're here in this country and you're making it work. There's a lot of people that were born here and they're entitled to shit and they ain't doing anything. They're sitting on their ass right now and you got your business going. So proud of you. Yeah, definitely. Can you teach us how to launch an online course, please? Yeah, I can. I can't teach you right now. Um, but, uh, you know, here's the cool part. Um, if you, uh, if you go to like uh, deansbook.com, I think that page is up right now. If you go to deansbook.com, just model what we do, right? Millionaire Success Habits, one of the greatest selling books, one of my favorite books. Um, my, of course, I love The Underdog Advantage, which is my newest book. But Millionaire Success Habits, we sold hundreds and hundreds of thousands of copies by launching that to the world. And the way you launch a book, the way we launched KBB to the world, the way we launch courses, it's, it's just model someone who's already done it. Of course, if you're a part of the KBB family, you know I give you all that um, behind the scenes. But um, just model other people to start. And uh, listen, there's a lot of great information out there and a lot of things to model. But then when it's time to really get the information, get in the right course. Get in KBB. Get in a course that teaches you. Get Learn from someone who's already been there. That's the only thing I'll say. Um, I don't want to go into sales mode here, but be careful buying from somebody with a great sales presentation but doesn't have the depth and breadth. Deansbook.com. I saw you put Dean's books. No, I didn't put it. No, somebody did. It's deansbook.com. Okay, this one. Uh, this one I feel like needs your help. Hi, Dean. I'm super depressed. I lost everything, and I'm and I'm debating on what should I even do anymore. I have lost everything. I feel like there's better things than this life. Yeah, that, that's a really. Th that's listen. Here's the thing. You might not realize this, and I want to share this with everybody right here and right now. I've lost everything before. And you're sitting like, nah, you're probably thinking not to the point where you're at. Absolutely to the point you're at. Everything, gone, nothing. Sad, depressed, envious of other people going at, getting ahead, thinking there's no way I'm out of this, getting out of this. I'm completely screwed. I, I, I was almost there and it didn't work. And that is a lonely, sad, really difficult place to be. And when what made it worse is thinking that there was nothing thinking there was nowhere to go, thinking why does this happen to me? Now, I'm not saying you're having a pity party, but I wanna to try to help snap you out of that state you're in because I, I know this sounds hard, but I've lost everything. I started with nothing and I lost absolutely everything twice, big time, like gone forever, didn't think it was coming back, wanted to hide from the world, didn't think that there was any way in, it was too late, one, I was too young, one, I was too old, and it was a bunch of bullshit. I'm, so, I'm telling you right now, you're telling yourself a story. It sucks. You might be going through the toughest time of your life right now. You might have no money. You don't even want to speak up because you're embarrassed. You don't even want to call your friends. You want to hide. I get that because I've been there. But I've also been on the other side when, said, when I realized that things happen for us. As Tony Robbins always says, what if life happens for us, not to us? What if this was awakening something in your soul? What if this was allowing you to learn something that you would have never learned if everything was going right in your life? What if this was the chance that a door closed in your face. You know what most people do when a door closes in their face? They sit there and they rattle it and they try to open it back up. I want to get back in there. I want my old check back. I want my old money back. Screw that God, the universe, whatever you believe in sometimes closes that door on purpose and they freaking lock it because you're supposed to turn your ass around because there's other doors opening that you're not paying attention to. So what doors will open for you? What open, what doors can you go grab and pull open because that one's shut? Again, I'm not trying to be like assertive, I've just been there. And I wish someone talked to me like that. Don't tell yourself a bad story. It is shitty, feel it, it sucks, feel it. But then get your ass up and go figure a way to get through it. The world needs you. The world needs each of you. We're all put here for a reason. So gain the courage to create a new story and look for a new door. Thanks, Brittany. I love this live, it's been my favorite. <laughs> Uh, do you rec do you recommend force or scarcity so you don't become entitled? Do you mean recommend force? Force. Oh, I'm sorry. Force scarcity, so you don't become entitled. Um, I don't know. I, I, that's kind of a hard one. Um, Someone also asked, like, how do you save in times like this? So I feel like people are asking. Yeah. So so I mean, listen. Financially, financially. there's only two things you could do. You can save money. Or make money. The best is when you can do both, right? So my suggestion is both. Like figure a way to prioritize what you spend. Like 
There are really smart things you can do with an hour sitting down and looking at your past one month spending habits. You're going to look at crap and go, oh, why do we waste money on that? Yeah. Shit. I, would have, I wish I would have known. Amazon. You can't go backwards, right? And life gets easy with this little thing in our hand. Amazon, click, 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 right? I know because the packages show up on our front door a lot. Um, <laughs> but kidding aside, you can look over your last month's spending and go, my life doesn't change dramatically if I just stop that, right? Mm -hmm. So that gives you a little cushion. And then simultaneously, how the heck can you create more revenue in your life, right? How can you make more? Um, if, you're in, if they laid you off or they sent you home and you're used to working for somebody else, that's one thing, right? Um, that's one situation. Another one is you have a business, you're not sure if it's gonna work in times like this or you wanna start a side business. This is the perfect time to investigate. This is the perfect time to scratch that itch, to obsess on what could work for you. It's one of the reasons Tony and I obsess on KBB, our knowledge broker blueprint, teaching people how to be in the information business. Because information is something people crave more in a down economy. So it would be, again, I'm not selling today, but it'd be one of the things I would absolutely put on my list. If you're a KBB family member, give a thumbs up, let everybody know you're a part of it. It is time to be in the information business. If, if you're looking for a business, investigate it. See how people are sharing what they know. They're sharing a skill, a hobby, or they're building a community of like-minded people, or they're building an online Zoom uh, community. Everything's virtual. Look at, we're training right now. Imagine if this was a, a monthly training where I was taking you through to another level, starting a business or scaling a business. Would it be worth it to you to spend an hour a month, an hour a week with me, right? Of course, and it would be, if I needed to learn what you did, I would spend an hour a week with you. Whether that's playing piano, doing hair like Lisa does, or, or e-commerce, or knowing how to be a manager, I mean, Everybody needs to learn something you already know. So one thing I would say is investigate the heck out of the knowledge industry because it's booming and it'll boom during this shifting market. But again, you could save, you can, you could save at the same time you could start exploring what's next for you and what a better time than right now. Mm -hmm. One more question. Okay. If you can start all over again, would you do, what would you do differently? Oh, what would I do differently? Um, what would I do differently? Um, besides, yeah, I would have married her sooner, but besides <laughs> that, um, uh, here's what I'd say, is the biggest thing holding you back from what you really want is the story you tell yourself on why you can't achieve it. And I know you've heard that before, probably heard me say it, heard other people say it, but it's actually the truth. The biggest thing that held me back from going faster when I was younger was the story I told myself on why I couldn't achieve it because I wasn't smart enough. I didn't have the right money. I came from ram wrong pedigree. My parents didn't have anything. I was a blue collar guy. I, I, I told myself a lot of crappy shit. Um, I would have I would have obsessed on gaining more personal or uh, specialized knowledge sooner. I would have worked on my mindset sooner. I would have worked on personal growth sooner. And I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have listened to all the people around me, even though I didn't. And I'm blessed that I've done so many great things in my life. I am surely not complaining. Um, but change your mindset, change the story you're telling yourself, especially in a time like this. This is really easy for us to get stories that cripple us, that hold us back. Um, you're going to have to work every day. You're going to have to write down what it is you want out of life. What do you want in the next 30 days, next 60 days, next 90 days, next six months, 12 months? You have to write it down and stare at it every day, guys, because if not, it is easy to fall into watching the news or watching Netflix and going, damn, this is hard. Everybody's going to be doing that. So do the, what's always worked for me is doing the opposite of what everybody does. Everybody I know is texting me, did you see this, you see this? I don't wanna see any of that shit. Once a day, here's what I would suggest, you ready? Yeah. Once a day, spend an hour a day. If you wanna see the news, maybe 30 minutes a day, schedule it. From 10 to 10.30 in the morning, you watch the news, you're not gonna miss anything else. If something else dramatic happens, your friends will text you. Watch a half hour of news a day and then spend the rest of the time on you, your bigger future, your next level, your personal growth. Stop screwing around here. All right, that's my message for today. Here's uh, uh, the last thing I want to tell you. Um, weeklywisdom.com, if you guys could post that. Um, Tony and I put some really great trainings up there for you. Again, uh, seriously, nothing to buy there. Um, we just want to give back and give you some trainings to help with um, creating certainty in your life. Um, so we're going to try to go live every day. If you don't hear from us, well, we'll let you know because this is... This is about to pop. This is about to pop. Are like, you guys interested in seeing the birth story? Yeah, we were, de we were debating if we should share um We're definitely going to get it. Post something, right? But how much you know, should we post? Take uh, pictures. Footage and, um, pictures for ourselves. But 
I really enjoy looking at other people's birth stories. And yeah, we didn't know if everybody wanted I, I enjoy it so much. I mean, yesterday we were both crying looking at... Yeah, because we're having a baby. But most, people are, up. but most people aren't all, right, having a baby, so we're, we're in that sensitive crying. mode. So would you guys want to see us share more of the birth uh, process? Not, not the crazy stuff, but you know, just the whole... Heading to the Not that angle, but a different angle. Yeah, yeah, angle. different angle, exactly. <laughs> no one wants to see that angle. All right, I appreciate yeah, no. you guys so much. Um, have you guys uh, and baby Luca in my prayers? All oh, thank you so much. Yes, baby Luca. Thank that's who's so coming much. to this earth. Big old boy coming thank soon. Thank you. That's all we want is prayers. That's it. That's yeah. all we want. Uh, you guys are awesome. You. Appreciate you all. And uh, remember, this is, uh, this is crazy times. If you feel scared, it's okay. But... It's our, our belief, it's our certainty that will drive us through this and allow us to come out better in 90 or 120 good. days. Absolutely. And uh, check out weeklywisdom.com. You're going to like that training we put up there. See you guys.